PK in the universe here and I am back again with another video. And today I'm here to talk about not just a game, but a person who is making a game and that creator is Jarell Dulay of Silver Falls. Uh, Jarell recently announced in a video that he's kind of stepping away from Silver Falls and uh, not forever, obviously. You know, he's built this game and this lore. I mean, he actually like wrote a huge manuscript of the beginning lores and he's made a very unique horror experience and and unfortunately he's come to the conclusion and come to terms i guess with the fact that he loves doing the silver falls games but unfortunately they're not making him a sufficient amount of money to keep his studio open so he's gonna have to focus on different types of ips to keep the studio going and it sucks guys what can i say I'm a big fan of Silver Falls. I mean, I have more than a Silver Falls hat, okay? So clearly I'm a fan and I have bought most of his games. And I say most of them, not all of them because there's a couple of reasons. One, I never had a new 3DS. So obviously I couldn't buy certain games that were only on there. For example, uh, Guardians and Metal Exterminators and Three Down Stars. Now, I've also had some games that Jarrell's actually given to me, actually in cases where there was one case where I think I won a copy of it for free. And actually, I gave one copy of it to my son, actually, and put it on his 2DS, and that was um, uh, Ghoul Busters, actually, which I do own on the Nintendo Switch as well. I own, yeah, I own Ghoul Busters on two different Nintendo 2DSs and on my Nintendo Switch. And uh, he actually, not too long ago, gave me a copy of Guardians of Metal Exterminators S, which is on Nintendo Switch. And... Um, just totally unsolicited, just like messaged me out of the blue. It's like, here you go, man, here's a code. And no expectation to review it or anything like that. Just, uh, he really appreciated how I've spoken about Silver Falls games. And just, you know, that really made my day. I had, I was not expecting that. I was like, oh, I'll get this game when I got a little more money in the bank. But yeah, he just, you know, gave it to me out of the kindness of his heart. I mean, just what an awesome person. Jarrell's made some very fun, enjoyable games, and his Silver Falls games have a variety of gameplay. Anyone who says that his games are all just the same and look the same is not really paying attention. All of them play differently, too. That's one thing, I guess, is a positive or a negative. You could look at it both ways, that Jarrell makes a variety of different games that all take place in the same universe. Well, you know, some developers focus solely on one genre, like RPGs, for example. So if they're known for making RPGs, they just keep making RPGs. And that is the market they target. Whereas Jarrell, he kind of just wants to make something for everyone. And the danger of making too many genres or whatever is people, you know, go for that one single genre. And then they never come back for the other stuff because it's the genre that interests them. You know, but a lot of times, too, you have the opposite effect, of course, where somebody sees a story and they're like, well, I want to learn more about this story and these characters. And there are other games that's maybe a genre that's outside my comfort zone. But now all of a sudden I'm like, I'm going to try that genre, even though that's not really my thing. So you do see a little bit of both those issues, you know, so it's kind of a catch 22, really, of developing games with different genres in the same universe. So yeah, I watched this video of Jarrell's and man, I really felt for him. I mean, some of it I was a little confused by and then some of it I'm like, you know what? I totally get where you're coming from, you know? Like he talked about the algorithm, you know? And it's like, I mean, algorithms, I hate to say it, are basically created around what people are interested in. I mean, and here's the thing. It's not that... Jarrell is competing with AAA developers. Jarrell, you are not competing with AAA developers because there's not that many of them. You know what there's a lot of? Indie game developers. There's a zillion indie game developers and making video games has never been as easy as it is now. And why I think your games stand out a lot more is because you are making your own assets, you know, and a lot of people are like me, I'm just making games with RPG Maker with my son just for the fun of it, you know, we're not really actually producing anything, you know, but eventually we want to put something like on itch.io or something, you know, and there's so there's so many free games too. Gosh, there's an endless amount of free games, which ironically, Jarrell actually makes tons of awesome free homebrew games, you know, just out of the kindness of his heart. And he also, he does it, I think, too, to help him learn to develop for a specific system. So there's added benefit for him in honing his skills as a developer of different variety of platforms. And I think, yeah, I think a lot of stuff happened, too, you know, with the Breath of Thunder Kickstarter or whatever, you know. And I think that probably took a huge toll on Jarrell and that, you know, it's like it's one of those things. And I told him, I was like, yeah, develop, you know, there's 
people do expect you to have your game like 90% done when you make a Kickstarter in this day and age. There was a time, yeah, like five years ago, you know, nobody expected you have a game totally completed. I mean, I backed a Kickstarter in 2018 that has still yet to produce a game. And this is an NES game that I thought would be really simple to make, but apparently it's not. So I feel them on that, you know. Yeah, there was a time people thought the point of, you know, donating to a Kickstarter was to get a game made into reality. You know, it wasn't even about necessarily, you know, the rewards tier, but it is about the rewards tier now. And I feel like most developers who are doing a Kickstarter typically recognize that and they include the cost of the game into the development thing, you know, so it's like, so if they needed more money than that, than what they got, then they would not never really be behind because they had already anticipated the cost of what it would cost to create these physical games, to manufacture these like $60, NES games or whatever it is, you know, that's included within the concept of how much money they need. So, you know, and obviously they buy a lot of these things in bulk, like especially if you're like manufacturing NES games or something like that. So you're not going to be spending the full amount of money. So hopefully if you're doing a Kickstarter and it's a business and you're thinking of it from a business perspective, you're already anticipating, you know, the included costs of these pre-orders because the pre-orders are part of the cost of the process of a Kickstarter. So no, I don't necessarily think that puts developers behind depending on how they've already thought this out and approached it. You know, it just depends on the developer. Like I had backed the Kickstarter for this game called Any Escape, which is an escape room NES game. They already programmed the entire thing. Yeah, it was Kevin Hanley. Programmed the whole thing within a couple of nights. And so he had the whole thing good to go. So it was basically just a matter of people backing the Kickstarter, you know. Like, Kevin knew he was going to make the game and put it on itch.io or whatever, and I think it's on Nintendo Switch now, in fact. But, you know, this was just to give people the rewards, you know, and that was all about how the Kickstarter was focused. And I don't think Jarrell totally understood that. I think he still thought it was kind of like how Kickstarter used to be, you know? Yeah, I just think this was something that I think took a toll on Jarrell, honestly, and I think that has had an effect on him, you know, in this process and has probably contributed to leading us where he is now. Yeah... I mean, I think at the end of the day, you got to love what you do, you know, and I hope Jarrell, even if you're, you know, I know like he had said that uh, Silver Falls Undertakers, Nintendo Switch version, it's like the 3D version, I guess, is what he's making for going to be the last Silver Falls game for the time being, you know, and it looks kind of interesting, I'll be honest. And uh, I mean, I still personally prefer the Silver Falls Undertaker on Wii U and 3DS. I think those games are freaking fun. And, you know, obviously pay homage to the classic Atari 2600, especially E.T. It pays homage to that. But I think in a good way, you know, E.T. has a bad reputation because most people don't have the manual who ever come across the game to begin with. So they don't even know how to play it, which I think is true of a lot of old school games. There's a lot of old school games that have a bad reputation because you can't just easily, you know, pick up a controller and play it. But also, I'm really glad to hear that Jarrell has mentioned he's going to be putting on games not just on Nintendo Switch anymore. He used to put them on Wii U and 3DS before those eShops closed. But he's also going to be putting games on Steam and the Atari VCS. I'm really looking forward to the games he puts on the Atari VCS because, I'll be honest, I've been looking for an excuse to dust off my Atari VCS. The system is fantastic, honestly, you know. I got mine for $99 at GameStop back in the day, and I think that was a heck of a value. And a lot of people, even when I got it back in the day, agreed that this was a great value. You know, definitely more expensive it used to be. It used to be like 400 bucks USD back in the day. And uh, yeah, and I got it for 100 bucks at GameStop, which is awesome. And I have to say, every time I turn it on, I'm like, oh my gosh, why didn't I turn this on a while ago? You know, it's got a nice little variety. And the nice thing, too, about the Atari VCS is it's still a system that's actively supported. Now, the CEO of Atari... Um, he kind of said that, hey, I probably would not have greenlit this if I had been the CEO at the time, but he's been impressed with the feedback that it gets. You know, it really taps into that hardcore Atari market, and uh, I'm glad Jarrell's going to be putting games on the VCS. I will buy those games on the VCS. You know, it's like, yeah, I know I got Steam and everything, and I could put those on my nice, expensive $1,000 computer, but I'm excited for the opportunity to support him on the Atari VCS just because it seems like Atari VCS games don't really go on sale, but the people who buy them are hardcore about it. You know, it's a very hardcore niche audience, but an audience that's very loyal and, and I was always willing to check things out. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm really glad he's going to be putting games on the VCS. Now, I think he still should put the Undertaker's game that was on the 3DS or Wii U or a version like that 
on the VCS. I mean, dude, it's a no brainer, honestly. There's tons of games on the Atari VCS that look like Atari 2600 or 5200 games because they're literally ports of it in many cases, you know, that were developed by homebrew devs or whatever. So yeah, I think honestly, dude, go for it. Just put that on there. I promise you there are people who are gonna enjoy that version or whatever. But then again, I don't assume to know how easy that would be to make that game on a different platform. I think it's also worth mentioning the fact that it is not easy to take a 3DS or Wii U game and port it over to the Switch. I see this common misconception all the time, and I even talked about this a little bit in my um, Zelda video I recently did and had responded back to people and they were acting like I was some kind of Martian. Yeah, it is not as easy as you think it is. It's like trying to make an Xbox 360 game into a mobile game, okay? I think it stems back from the fact that Nintendo has ported so many games from Wii U and 3DS to Switch that people think it's easy, and it's actually not from what a lot of developers have told me. So it just depends maybe on what kind of developer you are and what kind of resources you have. When you're somebody like Nintendo, Nintendo has a lot more resources to do these things, and a lot of this stuff they even farm out to other developers to do the porting. So it's not as easy as you would think just to put these games on one system to another. It's not simply a copy paste job. And I wanted to make that clear because I don't know if I did throughout the rest of the video. If Jarrell messaged me and said, hey, if I could put one Silver Falls game on the Nintendo Switch before I take my hiatus from making Silver Falls games, what would it be? Without hesitation, I would say it's three down stars. Without hesitation, without question. And the reason is I've heard so many people say that, hey, this game, you know, when it first came out was kind of rough, but then Jarrell did some updates to it and plays great now on the new 3DS. And it was kind of a game that was just a little too powerful for the new 3DS. I've heard a lot of people say that. And it's just, you know, an awesome game that kind of really pays homage to, you know, Resident Evil to a Silent Hill type game and just looks great, even on the new 3DS. And I don't have a new 3DS and I've always wanted to play that and it's been on my list. It was just on my list, just like uh, Guardians of Metal Exterminators was a game that was on new 3DS only. So it's like that one last one I really, really would love to play. And I would love to see a remaster on Nintendo Switch, if that's possible. But I understand, at the end of the day, jarrell has gotta keep his studio open, you know? We all gotta do things we don't necessarily like in life, and that's just part of life, you know? Especially when you're, uh, as Jarrell said, he says, I'm living my dream, you know? I can kinda relate to this because my dad, you know, my dad had a dream when he was six years old, and at the age of 32, he finally got to live his dream and do it. And he did that job for like 30 years, in different ways, in different capacities. And by the end of it, he got kind of bitter, actually, you know, with, and I told him, I was like, well, at least you got to live your dream. And he got kind of like frustrated with me. And I'm like, and I think at the end of the day, my dad, yeah, he did get to live his dream. But but what he didn't get to live is his fantasy. You know, when you're a child, you know, when you're a kid, you think this is what you want to do because you see what the results are of that doing that. But you don't necessarily just to see how much work goes into this. Making games is hard. Making games with RPG Maker is hard. I can't imagine what it's like developing from scratch. That is a lot of work. It is. Anybody who's ever tried to totally understands that. I mean, anybody who has criticism for how games are developed, it's like, go out and, you know, mess with RPG Maker for a few minutes, okay? And then tell me it's freaking easy. Yeah, it's easy to just plop stuff down. But actually making pixels from scratch and stuff like that and making all this stuff. And yeah, sure, over time you develop your own assets that you can reuse and stuff, but it's still a lot of work and somebody has to do it. And if you don't have funding, that can be a huge challenge. And that's kind of what Jarrell's facing here, you know? It's like he, you know, is out there just doing his thing. He's just one guy. I mean, you hear so much about this or that indie dev or whatever, you know, made a game that just was super popular and did amazing. And yeah, a lot of times they had help. It wasn't just one guy. And that's what Jarrell is. He's just one guy. He literally just does it all. He makes his own music. He makes his own assets. He writes his own stories. That is a lot of work for any person. That's like the job of like five or 10 people, you know, in most cases. I, I can't even imagine, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's a lot of work. And I really appreciate the work he's done. And he's made some games that have really made me happy, honestly. And 
I found a lot of joy in the kind of games that he makes because they remind me of a certain style, you know, and I like the style, especially the more retro stuff like Galaxy Bound Curse. You know, I always talk about that's the one game on this channel I've reviewed. And yeah, it's one game on the channel I've reviewed. And you know something? We need to change that. So what can I do? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm some random dude with like 1,700, 1,800 subscribers, you know? So like it's a small audience, but I feel like I do punch above my weight in a lot of cases, you know, and maybe get a little more views than I rightfully should have. But uh, yeah, so what am I going to do? I'm going to talk more about his games. Now, they might not all be reviews. Some of these videos might just be first impressions videos, but like going forward here for a little while, just for a little while, every other video I make is going to be a Silver Falls related video. So the next Silver Falls related video I'm going to make is about Guardians and Metal Exterminators, a game he just gave to me out of the kindness of his own heart. I didn't even ask for it or anything. Just He was just like done a lot that's really been uh, helpful and, you know, retweets and supporting the Silver Falls games, here you go. You know, no questions asked. Just He's just an awesome person. And yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to do something. So that's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm not going to just sit here and be like, oh, it sucks what's happening to Jarrell. You know, it's like that he has to work on crappy games or whatever instead of making, you know, his passion project, which is Silver Falls. You know, he's written, you know, several, so much lore for this series and, you know, really created these characters and really brought them to life. And I want to share that with people, you know, what he's done. So I have a bunch of Silver Falls games. It's about time I do a little more talking about them and do some even more, even more playing of them, you know? So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do going forward here. You know, every other video, it's going to be a Silver Falls video. So if that bums you out, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. So anyways, what are your guys' thoughts? Have you played any of the Silver Falls games? And if so, what's your favorite one? Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.